All right, hello everybody. This is the Union BTC podcast. We're back another week once again. I'm John Stewart, and I'm here with uh, the two two guys that I happen to be doing this podcast with. <laughs> I'm Daniel Brown. I'm Tim Baker, and I'm ashamed of that intro. <laughs> I, it's better I'll, than you could do, Tim. I almost let something I've done better more. Than on multiple occasions. I almost let something more complimentary come out of my mouth, but I didn't want to lie on, <laughs> on a, a podcast that's going to be preserved forever. That's the good like point. These, I was yeah. just hedging all my Guys. bets. I didn't want to say anything that I might regret later. Yeah, your maker's going to know what you said on this podcast when you die, so you got to be prepared. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways. Um, before we get started with the uh, the main part of the show, which I think will be pretty interesting today, I want to remind all of our listeners that we have a Patreon now. If you want to look at it, it's... You can yeah, get in case d- you didn't hear about it last week. <laughs> yeah. Or, like, yesterday or whenever it was that that episode actually went oh, out. Oh, that's true. That's true. I was late. Sorry, guys. Easter, whatever stuff. <laughs> Anyways, you can uh, check out the Patreon at www.patreon.com slash you, me, and BTC. Why are uh, you... You, I, you said www. That is my least favorite phrase in the history of any words ever said. It's way too many syllables for a URL. <laughs> I hate www. Well, it doesn't matter how many syllables when you're typing. So, anyways... True. <laughs> www. I'll make it as <laughs> obnoxious as possible. Anyways, yeah, you can go there. Right now, we only have a few rewards. We're trying to work on coming up with some more. But, but yeah, if you're interested in supporting us, definitely check that out. Um, you can get cool stuff like bumper stickers and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you can do that. Sent yeah. by me personally with my bare hands. Yeah, and of course in the future there might be some more interesting things. Like we we talked about this, I think, last week about possibility the possibility of doing ad-free episodes. So maybe things yeah. like that. We just have to keep an eye out. Right now yeah. we're at zero per episode. Epi- <laughs> <laughs> zero dollars per episode. And zero Dude, we're patrons. gonna get filthy rich, yes. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I don't know, guys. You got to be the first one. Right now, that's just really sad. Like you should, out of just pity, <laughs> you should um, yeah. become a patron. Yeah, Tim, how's it feel to be pitied? Oh wait, you always are. Oops. <laughs> hey, who, hey, who one thing I should me? wait. Who pities me? I'm willing everyone, to take attention every, wherever I can. Shut up, Tim. Everyone does. Okay. No, wait. Well, if anyone out there actually pities me, please donate to um. The Patreon just to make them shut their stupid fucking faces. One thing I should update about last week, yes, I'm ignoring you again, Tim, is uh, just... You just said I that kept you were saying, pitying me before. That's different than ignoring me. Shut up. I kept saying that we're going to give you guys plugs in the next several episodes if we if you donate early. And I wasn't sure what date I had said. So I checked, and it's April 21st. So if you donate before April 21st, We'll give you a free plug and a website, whatever you want us to mention on the air, in every episode. Wait, we're going to give them a website every episode? (laughs) Yeah, we're going to give you all websites, free websites. seems like a lot of work. (laughs) Yeah, well, I'm a web developer, so I can make it happen, just like Spider-Man. I, (laughs) yeah, so the earlier you go, the more free plugs you're going to get for your website no we're not making you websites you're an idiot whoever believed that we were actually going to do that so anyway yeah jump in there patreon.com slash you me and btc if you want to put the www you can but you know it's a waste of time so (laughs) so before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's show which which it was kind of my idea and I want to question the free market if you care I'm going to tease you a little bit because I know you're super interested and you are about to tune out so I'm just letting you know we're going to question the free market which is pretty outlandish for this show not really we question a lot of things but we are a liberty podcast and liberty people love the free market and we're going to question it so we'll see where it goes but Tim got in a massive car accident today. He went to the ER. 
and you know he had to have spinal surgery like two hours ago. But luckily, he's I'm still, still here, and I still have to listen to you bitch about pitying me too much. That's how committed he is. That's how committed Tim is to this show. He's on his deathbed right now. No, the right doctor now. just gave me enough morphine whenever they said Tim was doing <laughs> podcasts. Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't know, though. I actually haven't even heard this whole story, so I want to know what happened, Tim. What the hell? Um. Well, the um the government, because of my work here on this podcast, did you any of you guys hear about the... um? The reporter a couple of years ago who, uh, he, the official story was he drove his tree or <laughs> drove, his, <laughs> drove his car into a tree. <laughs> and then like all the, consp- <laughs> <laughs> all the conspiracy people were saying like they hijacked his car. Anyway, um, somebody tried to do that day to me, except by hijacking, it was more just them bumping cause they were being retarded, not paying attention. <laughs> and they like, they tried to bump me unsuccessfully out into a, what is like very occasionally a somewhat moderately traveled road. So there wasn't really anybody coming. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was just an awful experience all around. I was traumatized. I was shaking. I think actually I, w- I looked up, I, th- I think I was changing my phone or changing the music. I looked, looked up. I was like, I don't even know if they tap me or not. So if that it was, was just your me fault. smacking Tim, the gas. You're, a, you're in big trouble now. Cause that's recorded. You saying it was your fault. Because you were on the phone. No, I didn't say it was my fault. I mean, I could be in trouble for saying I was on the phone, possibly. But no, I was <laughs> sitting there, and it was coming up the hill, and they bumped into me. But uh, anyway, the guy was saying something about insurance, and I was looking at the car, realizing that nothing had actually happened to the car. And then he's just like, um, yeah, insurance, insurance. I mean, like, it's it's not... My car, it's like my girlfriend's car, so I, if you oh, just that to explains keep it. a lot. He just didn't well, want no, to tell his girlfriend. His girlfriend was in the car. His girlfriend oh. was in the car. I think maybe they, right. I don't know. I have suspicions, but he said, but if you just don't want to mess around with insurance, I can just give you cash. And I was like, oh, wait, wait, what would be cash? Cash for an unemployed person. That's, that's good. I'm shit, not unemployed. You know? I just work today. <laughs> just because I quit that stupid piece of shit food place. <laughs> Wait, did you I'm seriously work of... today? Oh, yes, it's, is mean, it I'm lawn cutting, cutting again? Yes. All right, all right, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, I'm like just a little bit above. Well, plus you make the but... gigantic bucks working for me, like recording your glorious voice. You got to make a ton of money off of that, yeah. right? Yeah, and then being ridiculed the entire time while I'm trying to give <laughs> for a story and interrupted. That's that's so... what we should do. I'll pay you per insult. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Um. <laughs> But yeah, if I can continue getting uh, hit in the car, that'd be better too. As long as the person <laughs> is, I mean, part of, I've been waiting for someone to rear end me because I've already fucked up the back, like the top part of the bumper, not like the, anything structural, but the kind of just the piece, the plastic piece of bumper. I, I ripped off part of it on one side, so I had like duct tape back on there. So I'm waiting for someone to hit me and like tear it off and then be like, oh shit, I have to pay for all of it. But it didn't even do that. It just like smacked into the back of my bumper and then just bounced off. It didn't even, it didn't even rip that off. But, Tim, it's a good thing insurance people don't like Bitcoin because if they did, they'd be listening and then they'd see this claim coming in tomorrow, like full bumper replacement and they'd be like, <laughs> wait a second. Wait. I know who did that. <laughs> He's just making shit up. No, nobody does that with their car insurance. Anyway, um, so yeah, so yeah, cat, <laughs> yeah, who defrauds insurance companies? Who would ever do that? Bunch of fucking idiots. <laughs> Goodness uh, gracious. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know why he agreed to just give me money. I don't know. Is that even would that, that even be like against the law or anything? I have like, to is, say like that's one of the most boring car accident stories oh, I've it's ever awful. heard. It's and awful. I've, I don't know why I Daniel swear that I've heard like five other people tell the same <laughs> story where somebody's just like, I'll give you 20 bucks. Seriously? Like, I've no never di- heard that. I've, <laughs> I've heard it at least a couple other times. Damn. I've heard of people giving out cash. I just... No, but seriously, do we know if it's legal or not? Or if, if it would be... I mean, be... the thing is, uh, if, there's, if there's no damage... Like, you don't have to claim something, I don't think. No, and if there's yeah. no damage, like... There's no it, real point. Yeah. 
So, yeah, if you're giving me cash, like, sure, why not? <laughs> I could kind of see it, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if, like, an insurance company could possibly do something. I, I mean, completely uh, conjecturally. Because, yeah, John's right. You don't have to claim anything, but it doesn't. Maybe you have to ever report really it or up. something. Nothing would ever come up for the person taking the cash, though. They could still just be like, oh, yeah, they hit me. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, the worst I could see is if, like, they did do damage and it was unnoticed, and then the insurance company came later and was like, well, your car was already damaged and you didn't report it. We should have known. And so you did something wrong or something. I don't know. But, but that's but the yeah, thing. You I, don't have to re- report everything or you don't have to claim everything. So I don't, I don't even know. They're just know like, yeah, you... there's something fucked up. You fucked up. We're not paying <laughs> for it. <laughs> All like, right, if you well, claim somebody rear-ending you and putting a dent in your bumper and they find out that there was a dent in the door because you, like, hit it off the garage when you were getting out one day or something, like, I don't think they're going to be like, oh, you didn't tell us about this, so you can't yeah. claim the bumper. Right, right. Yeah, I, I you, you, see you it. broke our trust there. So, uh, Tim, what are you going to spend your payday on? Uh, save it and probably... Coke and hookers? Me. I don't think three hundred dollars is really enough for Coke and Hooker's name. <laughs> Wait, he gave you three hundred? Yeah. Okay, well that makes it more interesting. <laughs> Cause like I said, I feel like I've heard this story, but it's always just like, I'll give you twenty bucks. Well, I was like when he first said the thing about the cash, I was there like, I don't even know how to price this in my head, and then he's like three hundred, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? <laughs> you you should have been like, uh, maybe like four hundred. You never know what could be wrong in there, I mean. <laughs> anyway, nine hundred dollars. You could just throw that over here. Well, my recommendation is that you put it towards your savings fund for vocal surgery, so that we don't have to listen to your piece of shit voice anymore. I don't know. Do they have like? I think oh you gosh, can get like, like vocal Morgan implant surgery. Yeah. Like... Can they? <laughs> I want Morgan Freeman implants. <laughs> Why aren't you happy with how I naturally am? I'm not going to change myself just to make you happy. Why would it's I be not happy about us? It's about the viewers. We need more money. Exactly. <laughs> it's about the money that I don't pay you. So it's about the money, the money. No, but I'll, oh, yeah, all right. This has gone on like, too I need long. to get. A, I need to get a deviated septum. That's like could be kind of that could be affecting my voice. So this the uh, show should probably pay for at least part of that. I I could deviate your septum. It's I'll just deviate deviated. it in the other. Yeah, so I'll deviate it. I'll deviate it in the other direction, Tim, and then you'll be fine. No, you should see my left hook. I've been practicing. (laughs) I've seen your left hook. It looks like seven-year-old retarded (laughs) child trying to punch a watermelon. (laughs) Watermelon. (laughs) Oh goodness! All right, yeah, John, this has gone on way too long. That's what John's here for—the voice of reason. Okay. I'm not sure if that's so the case. I guess it's time for me to tell my story about driving, which is not nearly as good. I it, it, all it was was I saw this sign and it made me start thinking. And I don't know, actually, maybe you guys have seen this sign. Uh, so uh, just actually, sorry for the audience. This is the transition time. I'm uh, talking about the free market now. So I was driving the other day and I saw this sign. You guys might have seen it. It was in Swickley. Uh, I don't know, somewhere by the bridge or something. And it said, all it said was low vision products and it had a phone number. And I was like, it it, it wasn't like it was on like a kind of plaza building that had like stores or something in it. But none of the stores there were for the vision products. It was just like a banner on the side of the building. And it said low vision products and it had a phone number and it was pretty big. It was more than like one of those lawn signs or anything. It was a pretty big banner, probably like 10 or 20 feet wide. And, and I, it just got me thinking like that is the dumbest advertisement I have ever seen. Like, what do you mean low vision products? Like you're selling glasses or like magnifying glasses. And, and even if we obviously a slew of low low yeah, income like, like, vision ability products daniel it's wait where did low income come from they have low eye income like the the <laughs> what, <of> what? <laughs> what are you talking what? about <laughs> what the, the hell is income? eye income 
<laughs> I'm not trying to work in Cummings a while. Um, I mean, maybe. <laughs> are you just saying, like, it's cheap? No. No, I was trying to just Are you saying, like, no, I no, stands for income or something? No, there's low light co- incoming into their eyes, so therefore they have bad vision. And oh, you need stuff like, oh, like, yeah. like, like you glasses mean like in- and... Yeah, you mean what? like impaired vision? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Like so, so by, by income, you were talking about like light coming yeah, into incoming the incoming light. Yeah. They so what, they're wearing in- sunglasses. Okay. No. No. That's, I don't think anybody coins. has like low light coming into their eyes. Like <laughs> they don't make glasses for that. <laughs> <laughs> it opens up your eyes. Okay, but yeah, you mean like vision impaired. And yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, a slew of products. Sure, reading glasses, magnifying glasses. Uh, I don't even know, like contacts Sleeping maybe. Sleeping glasses. <laughs> Money glasses if we're talking about income. I don't know. But still, even if we knew exactly what they were selling, like why the hell would you just put a phone number to sell something? Why wouldn't you have a website? Like, who's going to call a phone number? And I mean, I, I know a lot of old people do this, so maybe it's not <laughs> the dumbest thing ever. But still, who's going to call a phone number well, and be like, "Do you what? can you list off every one of your products for me and their prices so I know what I would like to buy from you? Like, that just seemed... Get I don't a know. catalog, that's what you're saying, right? I mean, I guess, yeah, they could do that. They could just See, say, hey, give me your address and we'll send you a catalog. Go ahead, John. Maybe they only had... A phone number on there because they didn't want to clutter the sign for people with low vision. (laughs) That's another thing that I thought of is like, who the hell would sell eye products? Like, who the hell would sell products to people with impaired vision using a sign on the side of the road? (laughs) Maybe it's for tall people who can't see (laughs) things that are low. Oh, it's for yeah, it's midgets. Low income. No, it's for tall no, people. It's for they what? can't see. <laughs> no, it's, it's for it's low vision. It's no, for yeah, low vision. Yeah, low vision products because they don't have low vision. They have high vision. Oh, so, so, they... so no, no. That, see, that's another question. Is it for is it for people who want low vision or is it for people who have low vision? I mean, that's is it for tall people or short people? That's the question. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> oh goodness. Anyway. So here's the thing. All of this got me thinking, this weirdness, this poor marketing, random, just, I don't know. It got me thinking, like, that's a really bad business right there. I, I mean, maybe not. Maybe they're making tons of money. But still, Rick, even if this, even if I'm completely misinterpreting this sign, we all know that there are terrible businesses out there that go bankrupt, that don't make any profit, or that are way overpriced or way underpriced, and they just fail, whatever. In fact, it's, uh, I don't know, do you guys, this is kind of pulled out of thin air, but it's, uh, to me, I think I've heard something like nine out of 10 businesses fail. I mean, right? I mean, it's th- just just confirm that for me. Are there a lot of failing businesses out there? Yes. Okay. So I'm then about that's to be part where... of one, probably. <laughs> you, me, and BTC.com, the failingest <laughs> business of them all. Yes. Anyway, actually, we're not failing. We got tons of fucking viewers, so suck that, bitches I with low vision. Know if that, <laughs> I don't know if we... <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, so, okay, so here's where the free market comes in. It just got me thinking, like, one of the reasons... Okay, and here's another, not a disclaimer, but just some background. We've been questioning liberty quite a bit recently. It, it, even Even though we're the Liberty Podcast, and even though we love liberty... We also like to question it, and I mean, we, we never really planned this. It's not really what the show's about, but it just, it's something we started to do quite a bit recently. And we had the one episode, like, is privacy overrated? And even though Liberty people love privacy and Bitcoin people love privacy, you know, we had a conversation. Could it be overrated? And I don't know, a few weeks ago, we had a conversation about like property rights and if the government owns the property, are they even doing anything wrong? Stuff like that. And we love liberty. We hate the government, but we still wanted to have that conversation. Like, is there a chance that it's actually acceptable if they if they're just a big gang that owns a bunch of land? Can they tell us what to do? And so we had that conversation. And then just last week, uh, John brought up a topic kind of questioning you know is it is it wrong 
to pay taxes or or is it okay to pay taxes? Is it acceptable to pay taxes? I don't well actually that's not really what John brought up, but that's what we got into a lot. So so anyway, the point is we've been questioning the fundamental theories of liberty and not really theories, but just ideas of liberty quite a bit recently. And so what I would start off with is I'm not saying that government is a better alternative. I recognize that governments are violent, they kill people, I don't want government, but I still see some flaws in the free market when it comes to situations like bad businesses, right? Because I I haven't read all the classic free market economists, I don't know, like Rothbard or or Mises or whoever. But but still, I know that like the, one of the fundamentals of the free market is the price, right? The price is the ultimate piece of knowledge or, or the expression of knowledge even. Like how much should this be worth? Like, you know, who can use it? How much can they use it? What can they use it for? All that knowledge gets put into a price. And so then, you know, with a bad business, tons of people might have bad prices. They might think that something's worth 20 bucks and they'll sell it for 40 or they might waste money on advertising that doesn't work. There's all kinds of ways that you can set bad prices or spend money in bad ways. There's all kinds of ways that that can happen and it happens every day. So my first question to you guys is how does the free market mitigate that or, or address it or deal with it or whatever? Like, what is it about the free market that makes that not a big problem when people all the time make bad decisions about prices and the price is the core of the free market? Do you guys have any thoughts on that? About The price isn't the core of the free market, I wouldn't say. What is, what is the core? Just, I mean, I would, if I had to pick <laughs> some core... I guess. I mean, I'd why would it not just, be the price? The I price mean, is, is just something you kind of agree upon. A price is pretty. I mean, can be pretty arbitrary. When I give someone a price yeah, for uh, yeah, three hundred bucks ought to cover it. <laughs> well, it can be. It doesn't have to be. I mean, it's it's up to whoever's making the the deal between the two. You normally they're a little bit harder and faster, or not faster. They're just harder the prices are set in a store. You don't just like haggle with giant Eagle about the price okay. of the box of Cheez-Its. That's actually but, a good point because yeah, Cheez-Its, if I'm starving to death, Cheez-Its might be worth 50 bucks to me, but there's another person who's just, you know, the price say is set to $5 and you know, the average mom who's looking for snacks for her kids or whatever. She's like, all right, yeah, $5. That's, that's a pretty fair price. So so you're right. There is some variance there about how the prices are set and what it's really, sh- what it really should be or what it really could be. Uh, I see that, but I still don't get how how just poor decisions are dealt with because that's what that's what the free market is all about. Whether it's decisions or prices or even that exact situation, if somebody's willing to pay forty bucks or fifty bucks for a box of Cheez Its then why does the free market still work even even though they only sell them for $5 no matter who you are like right like that they could be selling it for 50 but they only sell it for 5 why does that still work because customers are just as stupid as other people you mean like why can them f- possibly making a mistake with the price I'm, I'm that, asking why it's not a problem like if if you're pricing it, something differently than you could be how does that not cause problems if it happens it does all day, problems. every day? That's what the, every single interaction with another person that, I mean, I'm not. The fact that every single time someone complains about gas, that's causing a problem. It's just everybody deals with it anyway because we're not children like, no, this is too much for gas. I'm going to, no, I'm never going to buy gas or I'm never going to buy this. You just, whether it's us just being too lazy as a culture uh, just because you just accept the price, I'd say it's more just we realize that uh, the difference between a dollar fifty or dollar seventy five on a box of cheese it's probably isn't something that you should let get you down too much. You're 
talking about a, a like a price as if there's some kind of like you said before that like the price can change depending on the situation but in a normal situation like the normal everyday selling a box of cheese it's there there's a price that you can say is like the optimum price but i don't think a lot of places don't have that nailed down to a certain degree. They don't have to, and you're asking why, and that's because, I don't know, people just don't care that much. We like variety. We like uh, going different places. We like different deals. If someone is cheaper on one thing, they might be more expensive on another, so you go to a different store. The problems are, I guess, what allows for competition because if one store had everything like perfectly nailed down had all their prices fixed to them to like exactly what they needed did all the perfect advertising never wasted any money on some stupid form of advertising like sending out ads in the newspaper that now only people over 65 see <laughs> uh, yeah. then they'd probably take over the I mean, if they were perfect, if they nailed down the price and then all their stuff was good then too, then everyone would always just shop there. But that's the hardest thing is pricing something, I think. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. okay. First of all, I, I have a theory about why it's not a big deal, and I'll get there in a sec. But I, I want to back up real quick to the idea of the price being the core. And I guess I just want to say why I think it's pretty much the core and, and see if you can explain why you disagree. But, but like I was saying, it, it seems to me that it's the price. Like I said, it's the ultimate expression of knowledge. I mean, the reason we don't like the, or one of the reasons we don't like the government controlling the economy is because when they set prices, they don't have very much knowledge at all. It's, it's one central entity and they, if they set the prices, it's probably not going to be the best price and not everyone's going to agree on it because they don't know what the price should be. I mean, even if it's a large entity, they could do, they, I mean, they could make some educated guesses, but ultimately it should be down to the individuals actually making the trade. So, but, it, but yeah, so that's why I think that I, I thought the price would be considered the core or, or like ultimate or essential to most free marketers. But uh, just because it's that's that's the whole point is I should set the price myself because I know what I'm selling. I know what it costs me. I know how it can benefit me or, or all that stuff is knowledge that only the, the consumers and the businesses can have. And. I don't know. I thought that kind of made it the core, but a a any other thoughts on why you disagree or, or if you still do, because I probably convinced you because I'm so smart and I'm such a good debater. So, Oh yeah, you've definitely changed all of my ideas. Um, <laughs> Daniel, you need to become the new head of business for the, whatever oh, empire takes over after for the you, United me and States. BTC podcast. That'll be the next empire. Are we going to take over? I'm fine with that. I mean, <laughs> If people are going to be stupid enough and let us rule over their lives, I'm not going to stop them. Are you tired of Bitcoin dice and ready for something different? Try Lucky Bit, the original falling coin game at luckybee.it. It's the most exciting Bitcoin game on the web. You can bet on five different payout lines and win up to 999 times your bet. You can even use their faucet to get some free Bitcoin. Dice is boring. Play different at Lucky Bit. Check it out at luckybee.it. So we haven't heard from John yet, and I'll, I'll try to keep it simple for you, just because I want to know. Do you think, John, that the price is the core of, of the market, or... Or is it like absolutely essential? I don't know. What do you think? Well, yeah. First of all, I mean, I take issue with like even saying that there is a core. Like who says there has to be a core? All right. All right. And I mean, 
I I get what you're saying about price being being about what makes it really important, but I see that more as an expression rather than something that's at the core. I think price is like how you express your freedom in a market, but okay. it doesn't that doesn't that doesn't make it work any better or worse. And and the other thing is also that I don't think anyone claims that the free market is supposed to be stable. It works by trial and error basically. So that that's always going to be there. That's just part of it, I think. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, there are lots of people that say that in the free market, you're going to have booms and busts. You're going to have ups and downs because people are going to try things and they may or may not work. That that actually makes a lot of sense. The other thing is, if I've ever heard anyone say anything about there being a core, it's it's that it's supply and demand. And like the price is is only... Well, yeah, but an indicator of supply and demand or no, an expression no, 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 no. of it. No, other way around. Other way around. Well, yeah, no, the it's, it's the an price expression. Indicates it. Supply yeah. and demand come first and the price comes second. Or the mm, yeah, sure, but but I don't know. To me it would be like the price is on top of the pyramid and supply and demand kind of contribute to the price. But but still, I I know what you're so saying. So why would the core be at the top? Okay, okay, fair enough. Whatever. <laughs> But still, regardless, let me let me back up then again to the to the more generalized question. People make mistakes, you know, businesses fail, prices are bad. And like I said, I have a theory about the solution, but I want to ask one more time to see if you have any thoughts, John. How do how do poor decisions and and bad prices and failed businesses, how do they not ruin a free market or why are they acceptable? Uh, maybe it's just the boom and the bust thing. Like you said, it's just, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think you've made a case for how it could ruin it yet. Okay. That is also fair enough. Uh, I guess. I mean, you're right. No specifics. I, no, you're right. You're right. I haven't laid it out. I guess to me, it just seems like if, if someone is selling a product way underpriced, let's say, let's just pick an example of a bad business and a bad price. Let's say that, uh, you know, widgets are worth $50 these days and, and people, you know, people are willing to pay $50 and over the, over time, the consumers might say they're worth 60 bucks because you know they they get they get that much use out of them and that's why they buy them because they're only 50 bucks but they get 60 dollars worth of value out of them something like that all right so let's say that's their base price is 50 bucks but let's say somebody gets a ton of investment you know they're going to make a better widget uh, that'll make you know that'll be twice as good and half as half as expensive all right so they start selling these widgets 2.0 for for 20 bucks. But let's say that their improvement ultimately isn't that great. And w- which happens all the time, right? I mean, people try to improve things or they think they're selling a great product. They they might even it might be a scam or they might even believe it. They might believe that their product is the best and they're going to sell it too cheap or too expensive or, or whatever. And and it just fails. It's not that great. Something is wrong that they didn't know. It doesn't even matter. The point is that there's, let's just say that there's something that's really underpriced. Well, when he starts selling the widget 2.0s for $25 and everyone's buying them because they think they're better, then the actual widgets, with, with which are worth, you know, 50 to 60 bucks, depending on who you ask, those prices are just going to have to slip and slip and slip. And and eventually those the, the widget one point are going to be worth like ten bucks, or, or not. That's not what they're worth. They could be worth a lot more. They could still be worth sixty dollars. But the only way they can sell them is for ten bucks. That's just kind of an unbalance in the market caused by a bad business. And I want to know how an unbalance like that doesn't. I mean, I mean. A, 
Yeah. So people lose a ton of money and people go out of business. And then over time, eventually they'll realize the mistake of the widget 2.0 and they'll realize that it wasn't that great or that it had problems or whatever. So I, I guess I recognize that over time, the problems will be solved. But then I guess I would ask, is that enough? Is it enough to solve problems slowly over time? And why is it okay that we can't spot those problems right away and address them? Or, or why is it okay that bad businesses can, can come in there so easily? And well, uh, well, first of all, before you try and respond, I just want to know, does the example make sense? Do you think it fits? Did I explain a reasonable situation? Yeah, I I might need you to define terms more, but... Okay, yeah, go for it. A ask me whatever you need to. Well, I guess one of the main things is, like, what you mean by something is worth 50 or $60 when people are selling it for 10 or $20. Because if if they're able to do that and actually still make enough profit to, to like, run the business and not go negative, then it's not worth that much. So, I mean, just because people are willing to pay something doesn't mean that it's, that it has to be sold at that price. Yeah. No, no, no. I know. I, I mean, know. as far as like what something should be priced, it's, I don't think there's a fixed number. It's, it's a range. And in some cases it's probably a pretty large range. Yeah. I, I know what you're saying. And yeah, there's a whole, there's, we could do a whole, we probably have done entire episodes about how things could or should be valued. I, I know what you mean, and there's there's different ways to to give things a value and a price or whatever. But and and, and I probably shouldn't have mentioned the thing about sixty dollars. I should have just said that you know they're paying fifty dollars now, and then somebody comes in and tries to sell better widgets for twenty five dollars. I shouldn't have gone into the whole sixty dollar territory because that's what the consumer can get out of it, and whatever. But still, I. I, I know what you mean. I, I Maybe my terms were a little weird there. But still, the point is that if this bad widget never showed up, the price would have stayed at $50. And it should still be $50 because this bad widget is a lie. They say it's good, but it's really bad. I mean, it, it's a lie. It's false information. It's wrong information. And it's infiltrated the market. It's infiltrated the pricing. And so... Based on true information, the price should still be $50. But because false information has entered the market pretty strongly, the price drops to $25 or to $10 or whatever. And so that's, that's the ultimate conflict there. And, and that also fits in. Like I said, it's, a price is the expression of, of knowledge or information. And so when you have good information, the price is stable, whatever it, it's said. It, it doesn't even have to be stable, but it's recognizable and it's acceptable at $50. But false or bad information throws off the price for, for a couple months or a couple years or who knows what. And so, yeah, I don't know. Did I clarify that enough? Yeah. I mean... One problem that I still have with that is like, I mean, exactly what you're saying. Price is an express is is about information and knowledge. I don't. I I have a hard time believing that there would ever be a situation where you'd convince somebody that something that was like one fifth the price of the same product and is just as good. I have a hard time believing that that would be the case unless it was actually as good because people, I mean, we have that saying, you get what you pay for people. If anything, people tend to assume that things that are more expensive are better. Okay. I, I mean, I, I agree with that and, and you're right that that might undermine my specific example because I, I did have a pretty drastic example but still, I think we would. I think everyone would agree that there are bad businesses out there that have bad prices and they spread bad information. I think everyone would agree that that goes on all day, every day. And so maybe it wouldn't be as drastic as fifty dollars worth versus twenty five or ten dollars. It might not be that drastic. But I guess I was just feeling that, you know, bad prices are out there everywhere everywhere and it might be cheap prices it might be good for the consumer but 
but it's still it could hurt the other businesses who are who are acting and selling on good information. But it's just and, about the consumer. Yeah, I think if you want to make this a stronger case, you should take this the route of monopolies because that's the that's the whole thing with pricing things too low. Like back in the 1800s or whatever when it was just guys who were inherited like um, millions of dollars which back then was worth what would be b billions now or whatever i don't know i'm just th making up numbers but you know what i mean guys who are born rich who can afford to lose money by pricing something super low and then as soon as everybody else goes out of business just completely take over right and and there as far as i know there's not really an answer to the monopoly thing right yeah, the the best solution I've heard was it, it was kind of what we already said could be a solution in today's example. The stuff we just went over is just time, and, and I've heard that act, the exact example of like the railroad tycoons, and I don't even I don't remember what his name was, but it was a big railroad guy. He had a pretty much a monopoly and made tons of money, and eventually he died, and you know. All of a sudden, his his owner, his, everything he owned had to be split up between his his offspring or his heirs or whatever. And there were people fighting about who would get what, and it it got split up more and more and more after just one or two generations. And so, sure, the monopoly might have been bad; it might have hurt people, but over time, it's just not going to last forever. Uh, that that's the best solution I've heard to the monopoly problem. And and it kind of fits here, too. Like we've said, I mean, if the widget 2.0 sucks that much, people are going to find out eventually. And sure, it might cause problems. It might cause a, bu a boom or a bust, but it's not going to last forever. So I don't know. Does that seem like that's actually not the solution I had in mind, which which I'll still get to in just a second. But before I do, any other thoughts on just time healing all wounds as they See, say <laughs> i actually just thought of something that might actually help you make your case better all right so i was having a conversation with one of my friends the other day and he was telling me that he was reading this article about the oldest businesses in existence i guess i'll tell you what was like the oldest one just for kicks but that's not what i'm gonna well i i could talk about it, it could be it could factor into the example. But anyways, he was saying that the oldest business is some like construction company in Japan that was started in like 600. Oh, right. uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dang. But the other thing that he was, that we were talking about was Nintendo. Nintendo was actually started in like the 1800s or something like that. Holy crap. Yeah. And it, they used to make games like board games and stuff like that. Okay. So he was telling me that one of the interesting things about Nintendo compared to other video game companies or whatever you want to call it, electronics, technology, or whatever, is that they can afford to take bigger risks than a lot of other companies who are competing with them. And one of yeah. the reasons that is is because of how businesses work in Japan. And it's very much a... It's very much like an outgrowth of how their culture is, where everything is about ancestry and like respecting your elders and seniority and stuff like that. And apparently in Japan, the reason they have a lot of the oldest companies is because companies that are very old are respected, and so that and so people are willing to to bail them out or to support them even if they make something that's not that great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And even if you weren't going off of the, the Japanese culture, it is still true that bigger businesses with a ton of money or a bigger brand and stuff, yeah, they can take bigger risks. They can they can afford lower prices or, well, they can afford selling things for lower or buying things for higher prices, stuff like that. And And it's something like a monopoly, even if it's not a complete monopoly. You're right. It, In the case like of been... Nintendo, I think he was more talking about like not as much about pricing and stuff like that, but but more like innovation or or things like that. And in that case, 
you could argue that it's a good thing because Nintendo has produced a lot of some of the most well loved games and gaming systems. Okay. And everything. Okay, that that is also fair enough. Okay, so let's say you're able to take bigger risks. Okay, a bigger risk means nine... If it's a risk, and it's a really big risk, let's say then that means nine times out of ten, it's not going to go anywhere. But that one time out of ten, it's going to go really far. That's the whole point of taking the risk, is because if you succeed, it's going to be a huge benefit, it's going to be huge progress. That's actually a really fair point. And and so, yeah, you might fail a lot and it might be a little bit unfair because, you know, if you fail, you should fail. You shouldn't just be able to absorb it or whatever. But if you succeed, then you can make tons of progress that I actually I, I like that a lot. But but yeah, I, I want to quickly mention I get, we can wrap up pretty soon. We're coming up towards an hour. But I want to mention, you know, the solution sort of that I had. And that's just that it doesn't matter if the price is right or wrong. What matters is if people agree on uh, agree on it. Like in the Cheez-It situation, it doesn't matter if he would have paid $50. It uh, okay, let's say let's say he did pay $50. We could equally call that a bad price because the supermarket would have accepted $5 and they just sold it for 50. So it doesn't matter how accurate the price is. All that matters is that both parties agree on it. And and that's the fairest thing we can imagine and that's that's why we support the free market even though it has booms and busts and and big companies and small companies and whatever. I mean, sure, it might not be perfect. It's, it it might not give the best prices all day, every day. But it's going to, if people agree on the price, I mean, what more can we ask for, right? I mean, I mean, I, I almost want to say it's beautiful, right? If If people can just agree on something and make it happen, like what what could be better, right? Does that make any sense? I mean, I feel like we kind of have said, I feel like Tim said that earlier, and yeah, also that's probably. kind of what I was saying when I said that I can't imagine any time where people would pay for the widget 2.0 that was worse and they would say that it was better. Well, yeah. Or I, I don't was know, just though. saying that people tend to think that a higher price means a better better it's product. Not... It's it's just because a company prices something bad doesn't mean that people are going to buy it. Well, no, I, I would say I would say it a little differently. It's not that people won't buy it because people buy overpriced items all the time. It's not that people won't buy it. It's that if the market is free, they recognize that they're taking a risk. They recognize that it might not pay off and they assume that responsibility. If if people are selling shitty widgets for 10 bucks, you know, they know that they're taking a risk. And that happens. I mean, let's see. What did I buy recently? HDMI cables, right? Some of them are 99 cents and some of them are 25 bucks. Like, that's a huge difference. And I know if I'm buying a 99 cent cable or, or like a Bluetooth adapter or something, I know that if it's 99 cents, I'm taking a risk. It, it, it might be a piece of shit. And, but I also know that if I'm paying 25 bucks... It's it's kind of a waste of money because I know I can get them way cheaper on Amazon. Or, but is or it a whatever. waste of money? That's why I don't really like the widget example because it's worse and it's cheaper. Like, that's how it's supposed to be. Like, what about that as a bad pricing? Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. But, uh, okay. Well, I guess... When I when I say when I said worse in that situation, I kind of meant just worthless. Like it's it just it doesn't work after a a month or a, a six months or something. Oh, I mean even that's not worthless. But but yeah, I, I know what you're saying, and, and maybe my examples weren't perfect. But but I mostly it was just you know if people make bad decisions, then why do we trust the free market? And, and I think the number one answer is just that, well, the alternative is to trust the government, and we know that's not great. 
And then if we want to drill down more, we could say, okay, well, there's booms and there's busts, but it balances out over time. And then we can also say like, well, yeah, they can make bad decisions, but they shouldn't be too terrible because they're, they're putting their own money at risk. They're putting their own uh, profit at risk. And so, yeah, they could be somewhat bad decisions, but they shouldn't be terrible because there are real things at stake and, and we can also say, well, who cares if it's a bad decision? If they agree on it, then so it goes, right? That's that's what they accept, and they assume any risk and responsibility. And so what difference does it make if it's fair or if it's correct or accurate or whatever? It's just let people do what they want to do. Yeah, so I think, I don't know, that I think I just listed a bunch of the solutions we came up with, but... Uh, Okay, yeah, so we can do advice of the day, I guess, or advice of the week. So, yeah, I don't know, do, do either of you have advice to share? Always make sure you have good examples when you have some kind of argument. <laughs> your argument's yeah. only as strong as your examples. I mean, that's fair enough, maybe, but but I, I think I was intending it to be pretty drastic. I mean, I think everyone would agree that there are bad prices and bad businesses out there, right? Well, the thing is, I'm like saying it, your argu your example wasn't drastic at all. Like, it was pretty realistic. And it Okay. Like, the thing about a, a worse product being cheaper, that happens, that's like what it, that's what it is. Yeah, okay, I, I shouldn't have said it that much, though. I should, okay, I should have said, like, they sell them for $48, but they're really only worth two because they break after a week. Uh, uh, no, they break after six months. And it's a, I don't know, it's a, I'm, I'm not even going to come up with an Advice of the week, don't try to then cover up your advice whenever it's pretty bad anyway <laughs> and then try to make yourself look smarter. No, 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 I no, think no. you had an interesting I, like question. I just think you didn't have good examples for it. Yeah, no, I, yeah, you're right, you're right. But still, like I said, just keep, make it the general. Just keep <laughs> it generalized. I mean, if if people make bad decisions, how is that okay? <laughs> like, how much more generalized does it get? Or like, how does the world cope with bad decisions? Why, you know, then you generalize it even more. It's like, it's it becomes the problem of evil, right? I mean, if, if there's evil in the world, uh is that okay? Why? Or how can there be good and evil at the same time? Is there even good and evil, evil at the same time? So, so really, that's what this whole episode was about: was the problem of evil, and and we just solved it. So, suck that. <laughs> My advice is also don't get into philosophy. Oh goodness, I I would agree with that every day. Oh, I mean, get into it, but <laughs> yeah. just just. But just as a waste of time, don't actually think you're going to get anywhere. <laughs> well, I guess my advice, oh gosh, I don't know. Just don't make shitty businesses, right? I mean, don't sell vision products on a sign because people have to read that shit. And if they can't read, yeah, I don't know. Just, just don't make crappy businesses. Don't try to sell stuff. Don't try to do e-commerce on the phone. I mean, set up a website at least. I, I mean, you don't even have, like, you don't even have to make the website that big. I mean, maybe the vision impaired person can have their sister read it. Maybe we and, were taking that sign too literally, and it's not actually. Oh, it's about like metaphorical vision. Like people don't have enough vision for their life. They're depressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's an advertisement for like a Hindu church or something, or a Buddhist or. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It could be. It could be. You call that number and it's like the Church of Mormon or something. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Mormons. <laughs> well, hello, my son. <laughs> I was talking about that with my same friend who I was talking about with Nintendo last week. And he was saying, like, I feel like um, Mormonism is like the gateway drug to, like, Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. It's like you have yeah. half a foot, or you have one foot in the crazy bin and the other, like, in the normal. <laughs> hey, guys, if if you're not Mormon, go to patreon.com slash you, me, and BTC. And if you are Mormon, I mean, just give us money anyway, because 
maybe it's good to be made fun of sometimes. You should probably I, I cut really that know. Mormon thing now that I think about it. There might be someone. Wait, seriously? More... There no, are, I don't care. Suck. There are a since lot of when Mormons. Do we, since when do we care about offending people? Are you kidding me? What is this? You're going There's soft, There's like, a bunch John. of badasses on the, right, on the internet. <laughs> We're not afraid of no Mormons. Hey, we know who, what they do who have people. I offended on this show? Yeah, Tim, Definitely you're the one who offends Africa like every other episode. <laughs> I don't I don't know that I think Mormons deserve to be made fun of on the internet just because they're crazy. <laughs> uh, who well, he keeps on throwing uh, yeah, up those I mean, insults. Uh, I'll agree with you there, John. You know, that's one of my closest tell beliefs is that everyone is crazy but i don't think that means that you shouldn't make fun of them for it well the thing is i, would, I, I don't want to make fun, fun of, of them unless i have the chance to actually like tell them why is more uh, of the, the issue. real question is how much money do they have because if they have a lot of money then no we shouldn't make fun of them and it, so what i'm saying is that i don't want to make fun <laughs> of somebody without being able to actually talk to them about it for afterwards yeah that's fair enough well better. hey you got a twitter handle right john what is it at JJ underscore Stewart, I think. I'm I've been there you really go. bad on Twitter. Twi- no, you're right. I'm not you're right. gonna have conversations with people about this on Twitter. That is just bad. <laughs> All right. Mormons well tweet me. Speak tweet to at you me and BTC. Seriously, if you're a Mormon, you know, let us know. Tell us if you were offended. And and you know, if if it's that important to you, I'll connect you with John and, and you guys can work it out. Yeah. Or or you you know, or I'll just talk to you about it. And we're not gonna and, debate and, it on Twitter. <laughs> That's my one yeah. condition. <laughs> sure, whatever. Oh, don't do that. That's fine. But yeah, tweet us, at you, me, and BTC. And if you're not a Mormon, if you hate Mormons, then go to patreon.com slash you, me, and BTC. I'm not saying we hate Mormons, but, you know, we'll take your support anyway. All right, uh, come... I don't know. I, I, I'm just, let, let's just close it, because i'm done i don't want you to quit for the past 10 minutes daniel yes please <laughs> anyway yeah so i don't even know what all that was just about but all the music in today's show was from john stewart who doesn't hate we'll the be- <laughs> hater <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back next thursday ish you know thursday night friday morning who knows peace guys thanks Someday, a lot for being here Monday, whenever.